This is Lisa Scottolini, and I wanted to explain what you're seeing. You're now entering the lobby of the Collegio Militare in Rome. It is a military college in Rome. It is not generally open to the public, so we wouldn't ever be able to get in here. But for this ceremony today, which is a commemoration and a memorial service for the 75th anniversary of what happened to the Jews of Rome in October 1943. And so you'll go through the lobby and directly into the courtyard itself. And this is the actual courtyard where the Jews of Rome were held. And all of that is detailed in Eternal. And this is the memorial service to honor those victims and to make sure that we never forget them. It's very moving and very solemn and very important. So thank you so much for coming today. I want to talk seriously about what you've seen because it's really an insider view. I don't know if you were here for the video, but I'll tell you briefly what it was. And you heard a little of my voiceover because it was in Italian and I wanted to explain it. Hey, Nancy, I went to high school with you. And uh, really give it the import that it deserves because when I planned my research trip to Rome for Eternal, I planned it to be for the 75th anniversary of this incredibly shocking true event that took place in history that I didn't think was widely enough known. And it took place in October, 1943. And so I wanted to be there in October, 1943 to experience that anniversary. And at the same time, everything about October, that time of year in Rome, what was it like? And during my research, I met somebody and I went to a little museum and I talked to people and they said, you know, we will give you this invitation. You are invited specially to the event that you just saw on film. It is a very private ceremony commemorating the 75th anniversary of this October 1943 event, which was part of the Italian Holocaust, but specifically what happened to the, the tragedy and the crime of what happened to the Jews of Rome. And so it was really an important moment. And what also is so amazing about it, and I'll show you pictures in case you didn't see it that well, because what is significant about the location of this memorial is that what was being commemorated that day, 75 years prior, occurred on this spot. Do you understand what I'm telling you? This was filmed at the Collegio Militare. It is the memorial, sir, that is the military college of Rome. It is not open to the public. And it, it's for training our soldiers. But today, it was a special site of this Holocaust remembrance because it is where the Jews of Rome were taken in October 1943. And I'm not going to tell you more about that because I spelled it out in Eternal. And it's a very, um, it's not just the one event. It's actually a really um, horrifying, but also really moving kind of a cat and mouse game that the Nazis played with the Jews of Rome. And I wanted you to see the whole history of it because it's really compelling. Like when you read it, you go, I can't believe this really happened and I didn't know about it because that's how I felt. So let me take you a second inside the Collegio Militare because this is what it looks like inside. And this is the ceremony itself. Let me show you a few pictures because you probably can't get it so well from the video, especially since I like jerked it around a lot. Here's the beginning, everybody getting ready in their seats. And there's the beautiful place. And this is the actual colonnade because the day in October 1943 that this horrific thing happened, all the um, Jews were taken. And when the ones who could tried to get under that colonnade to shelter themselves from the rain. But otherwise, men, women, children, families, just sitting in the cold, freezing rain after this. And that was the only the beginning of how horrific it was gonna be for them. Here's more pictures of it. So you can see the Collegio Militare. And that's the front. Now, let me talk a minute about the, I don't know if you saw in the video and how much we were able to sh show you. But you know, I just thought that this was such an incredible memorial to the victims. And I will tell you why, because I hope you were able to see, because what they did was they, all the officials talked a little, rabbis from the synagogue, officials from the Vatican, the mayor of Rome, an ambassador was there. They all gave their little speeches before. But what the actual memorial was, was complete silence, except for the reading of the names of the victims. And as you saw, it was so moving and in a way so incredibly um, metaphorical really, and, and nuanced and creative. Because what happened was somebody would write the name 
and the announcer would say it. And I sat there and watched them all and everybody did. It was completely silent. And I was trying to wonder, are they writing it in ash? Are they writing it in black chalk? And as you saw each time, they would erase it, but not completely, which is also telling. And what I thought about, I thought a little of the Vietnam Memorial. That when you, and, and I thought of my father's grave. And I thought of, what I thought of was this that your name is your identity. You know, when a baby's born, what are you gonna name it? What are you gonna name it? Let's pick out names. A name is who you are and you come in time to identify your name, if you're lucky. Um, and when the Nazis came in, and we talked a lot before, it's not just the Nazis, the fascists really perpetrated a lot of atrocities against the Jews so that when the Nazis came in, they knew where to get them, right in the ghetto. But the first thing the Nazis did when they got you was they took your name away. They gave you a number. And there's a reason for that. It is the most dehumanizing thing you can do to a person to take away their name. And under the fascist rules, you know, they took away personhood. They took away Italian citizenship, which is incredible. And as I've said before in previous videos, there are so many Jews who are Italian Jews who joined the fascist party because I have pointed out that unlike Nazism, the fascist party did not begin as anti-Semitic, so that those Jews were doubly betrayed by their own party. But when the Nazis take your name away and they give you a number, they strip you of your humanity. And what was so incredibly moving about this memorial and why the place was completely silent, except for the name and the writing of each person's name, was because in a way, their identities were given back to them. You cannot take someone's name away. You cannot do that. And that was such a great kind of defiance. You know, it's funny when I was little, and you've heard me talk about my mother before we call her Mother Mary. Um, I did something, something, I don't remember what it was. It, was, it wasn't bad, because believe me, I'm the goodest of good girls. But she said, well, that's our family name. And I said to her, Ma, I remember very clearly. I said, Ma, we're not like the Kennedys. Like, what's your family name? She said, you have a family name. No matter how much money you have, no matter where your family's from, that is your name. And I think I carry that with me. That's what I think about with my books. That's why I do the research. My name is on the front. I want you to love it. But I want it to be accurate and right and true. And that's what was so great about the ceremony. You know what else it reminded me of? Everyone, when you go to the Vietnam Memorial or you go to a cemetery, when I saw a Scottolini name, my father's name, on his gravestone, I, m my instinct was a rubbing. You've seen people at the Vietnam Memorial. Maybe you've done it. I haven't done it, but I've certainly been there. And it's hard to not cry when you see somebody rubbing, making a rubbing of someone's name. That is really the ultimate memorial. And that's why I think it's so important for the Italian Holocaust, because it's very hard to conceive of the numbers of those were killed. You know, you're talking about six million Jews during the Holocaust all the numbers of people killed during the Holocaust. But a number is hard to quantify and a number does not play, does not pay homage to the victim. Just one name. And when you watch that video, when you get a chance, you'll see one name after the next, after the next. And those relatives of those people were in that audience and they wept when that name come up. So it was a very, very moving thing. And it was a perfect, perfect way to give these people their humanity back. You know, it's hard to define what justice is. And justice is a really hard thing to get when the victims are gone and the evildoers are gone. But all you can do is tell the story. That's what I wanted to do in Eternal. And all you can do is make people aware of who these victims were. And so you have a name that is never quite erased, that cannot be erased forever, that will not be as long as we remember it, and we will. When I wrote Eternal, of course it's fiction, and we've talked about how historical fiction has some factual basis. When I mentioned the neighbors in the ghetto, I included some of those real people's names. So they're there, and you'll know it. And that's why the story was important to tell.